Welcome to another video with Scruffy Tales. This time around we will take a short look at the strange decision of bringing really old Cold War era tanks to the battlefields of Ukraine. When we saw news of the Leopard 1 being shipped to Ukraine, lots of eyebrows were raised. It is an old tank with inferior armor and armament. Now, the same questions are raised as we learn that Russia is sending T-54 tanks to fight in Ukraine. I think we have to remember that there are a lot of really old vehicles in use in the war in Ukraine. The American M113 was designed in the 50s. The Russian BMP-1 was designed in the 60s. Germany will send martyr IFEs that were originally taken into service in 1971. And Ukraine, just like Russia, fields a lot of very, very old tanks and armored vehicles. As for the older tanks, I think people view these vehicles in the wrong light. They aren't tanks anymore. And I don't think the idea is to use them as tanks. They are, in fact, infantry support guns. They provide heavy firepower to infantry units that only have APCs and trucks. They are not supposed to engage main battle tanks, but instead take out troop transports, bunkers and buildings. They can suppress a trench or a ridge line from a distance and allow friendly troops to maneuver. What they also do is allow other heavier vehicles to fight the big battles so they are not wasted on support actions. Can infantry destroy these vehicles with simple and tank weapons? Yes, they can. Just like they can destroy an APC or an IFB with the same weapon systems. But you still need these anti-tank weapons to deal with these old tanks. They are still immune to rifles and machine guns. And they have big cannons that are dangerous at quite some range. That means you have limited options to deal with these vehicles and you still need to get pretty close to them to take them out. So yes, a Leopard 1 or a T-54 won't last long in proper tank engagements, but I don't think that will be what they are used for. Obviously, they might end up in situations where they have no choice but to fight proper tanks. But I think the smart move for both Ukraine and Russia is to use these old tanks to support infantry units, allowing the proper tanks to go and do proper tank stuff instead of supporting infantry versus APCs and buildings. There are some other advantages with the older tanks. They are easier to use, it is easier to learn how they operate, they are easier to repair. And in Russia's case, there are thousands upon thousands of these old Soviet-era tanks around that can be butchered for spare parts. There is some logic to the madness. These old vehicles still protect the troops inside from rifles. They bring big guns, and they are dangerous at range and can easily bring down buildings or blow up troop transports like American-made M113s, also vehicles from the 50s, by the way or other light vehicles, like Martyrs and even Bradleys, they can significantly boost an infantry unit's firepower. Compare it to a Carl Gustav recoilless rifle. Does the Gustav protect the gunner with bulletproof armor? Can the Gustav hit accurately at one kilometer or beyond? Does the Gustav gunner have a machine gun to protect them at all times attached to his hip? It's a silly comparison, I know, but you see my point, I hope. The Gustav provides a lot of firepower to an infantry squad. An old tank, like the Leopard 1 and even the T-54, provides a lot of firepower to an infantry platoon. On a modern battlefield, they fill the same role in supporting the soldiers with significant firepower against targets that aren't tanks. And when a proper tank comes along, you still need the proper weapons to deal with it. So while it is a bit weird to see Russia bring out these old, outdated tanks, they might still be useful by freeing up proper tanks so they don't have to support infantry. 
And to be honest, these old tanks can still damage a modern tank if they hit the tracks or the rear. Maybe not very likely, but still, it could happen with a lucky shot, I guess. Is it a failure for Russia to be forced to rely on these old vehicles? Yes, obviously. It is embarrassing and shows that they are running low on proper modern vehicles and that they are desperate. Is it ridiculous? Not necessarily. That depends on how they use them. If Russia uses the old tanks as infantry support guns, then they will fill an important tactical role. If they are used to replace T-72s, then Russia is in a world of trouble. And I suppose the latter is what we should hope for in that case. We will see what happens. But don't underestimate these vehicles just yet. You still need an anti-tank weapon to deal with them. And they still bring big guns that can kill lots of people. They are a threat to soldiers and troop transports. And they can easily bring down buildings and engage trenches and bunkers. And that is it for now, a short video, but I think I managed to highlight the most important aspects of these older vehicles reaching the front lines of Ukraine. And I think I've made some points that most people fail to realize. So with that, I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Kupomarsh, Ukraine.